Hi, if you like the video, please remember to subscribe. Hi, I'm Rob from RobNofoot.com and in this kind of ongoing series, I guess, um, I'd like to just show you a little, another little reason why you may want to upgrade from um, Picasa to uh, Lightroom 5. Now, Picasa is a fantastic program. Um, it's free, uh, it's lightweight, but powerful. Um, it runs incredibly well on older laptops and older computers. Um, it has things like face recognition and powerful editing tools. Um, however, Lightroom, uh, Adobe with Lightroom and Photoshop have got this amazing deal at the moment where for less than a tenner a month you can have the latest version of Lightroom and the latest version of Photoshop. Um, so for less than the price of a couple of cappuccinos, you can have the latest and greatest uh, software. And if you haven't seen it already in my um, YouTube sort of video stream, I've done a, done a video, quite a long one actually, on about kind of the pros and cons of upgrading from being a Picasa 3 user to a Lightroom 5 user. Um, and basically it comes down to the fact that Lightroom's great, it's a lot more powerful in terms of editing your photos. It doesn't have all the features, but it can be very, very slow. Um, and there's ways of speeding up, but really you need to be running at least eight gigabytes of RAM for it to work. However, if you do think about, um, you, you are thinking about changing. One of the great things as well is second monitor support. So what I've got here is I've got my Acer Aspire E1571 and then I've got my old LG Flaptron W1934S, it's an old SVGA or VGA monitors plugged into the VGA port on my laptop and as you can see I've got uh, um, Picasso running on here and I've got it, I've got the, the, the display is is cloned up onto this particular display as well so you know so you know I can go in and edit photos and if you haven't seen them already as well I've been doing a series of videos on calibrating your displays using something like the Spudful Pro um, which is working very well so both displays look very very similar in terms of color but the problem is Picasso doesn't support multiple um, monitors um, so whatever I've got on this monitor appears on that one which is it's okay but if I if I want that particular picture of sort of full screen or something like that, um, uh, to say say to do uh, do do a slideshow to bring it up, I, I, I can I can do that. But it's full screen on both, you know. So the, the ideal situation would be where I could edit, for example, on here and then look up to this one to see how I'm doing. So this is where this is where uh, Lightroom improves on that. So if we go into Lightroom. What we'll see here is again I've got both displays sort of cloned. So if I go into my graphics properties and customize them, and we choose output to extended desktop, what you should see as it flicks over. Oh, I've got it the wrong way round. <laughs> Whoops. And let's do that again. Graphics options, output to extended desktop, built-in display and monitor. There we go, so it should flick around the other way now. Excellent. So what you can see here is, if I put that in that particular mode there, you, can you see the, the multiple pictures? So I'm in the, the library uh, module and I could go through and I could select lots of photos if I wanted to if for editing on. But what you see here is a full screen, or well, virtually full screen, I've got a bar at the one, representation of the particular photo that I've uh, selected. So any particular photo I click on here comes up full screen here. So I can have this to one side and it enables me to quickly go through, look at lots of different photos, and I can be you know flicking backwards and forwards. And I find this a really powerful way of looking at my photographs and really and editing um, editing my photographs. Um, and similarly you know when you uh, decide to edit a particular photograph. Um, I don't know, let's have a look. Let's go into... Again, I can, can do my editing on here. In fact, let's go into the develop module. I can do my editing in the develop module. And so as I change things here, um, let's have a play around, they'll appear full screen on here. And again, because most monitors have been calibrated, the colors are all incredibly similar. So I don't know, let's um, put something on like, um, let's do a split tone, shall we? We've gone to black and white. Let's 
change the hue, saturation, uh, actually no I don't, <laughs> I don't particularly like that, let's go back to colour and let's put, I don't know, let's put a, uh, let's put a vignette on it and as you can see as I'm playing with things in Lightroom in the develop module on the full screen things are, are changing very well indeed. But tell you what, let's go back to so let's go into the presets and let's go to I don't know uh, the colour preset, an aged a bleach pie pass, what do you reckon? Or should we do an aged photo? There we go, aged photo. How cool is that? And so there you go, so there's another reason you may want to consider if you're uh, thinking about upgrading from Picasso 3 to, to Lightroom 5 on, on the Creative Cloud is the fact that Lightroom does have support for a second monitor. In fact, I think there's different things you can do with it as well. You can ask it um, what, what you want it to do with the, uh, with, the, with the second monitor. Let's have a look. Second display. So you could have full screen, monitor preview. Um, you could have it uh, showing the filter view. Yeah, so you can choose, you can customise basically what you want to appear on this second screen. It might not just be a full uh, full screen version of what you're working on. And I think that's really, really powerful. Um, and so, yeah, uh, another reason, if you're thinking about upgrading from Picasso to Lightroom 5, yeah, uh, another reason would be the fact that Lightroom 5 does you know, fully support second monitors. Right, okay, that's it. Uh, my name's Rob from RobMonFerro.com. Remember, you can email me, scalespeed at gmail.com. And um, thanks for watching.